My next tip for board training is to just be creative and use the whole board as a tool instead of like focusing in too much on what's currently lit up. Um, so the goal to me of using a training board is to like to learn more about movement, right? Obviously to develop some power, to develop some capacity, there are physical adaptations, but you are trying to learn how to move better too. And from the movement viewpoint, even if you are climbing, you know, this problem that has these eight holds lit up, really all the holds are still there for you to learn, right? So using other feet to make the moves more stable or like grabbing closer handholds to coordinate the first part of the move and then like bumping from there to the hold you're going to to coordinate the second part of the move. Like those kind of intermediate strategies can really help like bring things together a lot faster and it helps you like kind of break things down into pieces, right? Even like if you have a problem where there's one move you're really struggling with and you have all the other moves dialed and you want to like make that intermediate step towards sending that problem we'll just like add one hold to it and then try to send it with that hold you know and if it's a multi-session project try to send it with that extra hold in every session that you work on that project mm. and you're getting a lot of reps on the other moves but you're also like building the confidence of like actually like quote sending something mm -hmm. unquote you know even if it's not a quote real unquote boulder um that's been really helpful for me, especially like on the moon board where a lot of it is just like really big, powerful moves to like reasonably good holds. Like a lot of the time just adding a foot, mm -hmm. you know, lets me kind of do an easier version of that move. And then I'm kind of like, okay, that's what it feels like to grab that hold, you know? Totally. And similarly, like if there's a hold you really struggle with, like on the moon board, I, I'm sorry, moon board enthusiasts. I don't remember the names of all the holds, like the grid, <laughs> but the, that mm. really uh, messed up black undercling, everybody's going to know the one I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, I was like trying a 7C, I think, or maybe it was 7B plus or something that had that on it. And I was like, this hold is like messed up. And I went back and like tried a bunch of easier problems where I could find that hold. And I just got better at holding that hold. And I didn't go back and send the benchmark because just because my season kind of ended, but I was getting a lot better on that black undercling for sure. And I think that's a pretty like valuable strategy. Yeah. Yeah. That's really smart. Yeah. I, um, I often find on the moon board, especially I'll just kind of hit a wall. Like mm -hmm. I'll be able to do seven B and then I can't touch, you know, some move on the seven B plus or seven C I want to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's a really good way to, to create something that's kind of an intermediate step. Yeah. Add a I mean, foot and do the same hard move. Or, th this is really like a, a microcosm of something that I think is super valuable and getting better at climbing, which is like noticing commonalities of the things you want to do and then just trying to bring some intention of getting better at that thing into all your climbing, right? So like right now I have, you know, across a bunch of different crags, like three different projects that have big left shoulder moves. And so I've just been doing more big left shoulder moves, you know, and even like, like here in Leavenworth, in forest land, there's like a V6 called cruise control that starts with like a really intense left shoulder lock off. And then you you move to some other holds and you do another really intense left shoulder lock off. So like this season, I've just been doing that boulder every a couple times every time I walk by it. Mm. Cause I'm like just trying to get better at that left shoulder because I want to do those other climbs. You know, it's not perfectly related, but I think it does help to kind of have some like momentum and some intention with those kind of things. And a training board, that is the magic of a training board is you can reduce the climbing to it's like atomic sort of mm. concepts and, and work on one thing at a time. Yeah. Hey friends, I wanna give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Tension Climbing. I recently got my very own Tension Board 2 and I think it is hands down the most versatile and effective training board I have ever used. The folks at Tension set out to create the best board for broad incremental climbing progression and skill development. And I think they nailed it. I've been training on this thing for the past few months. I've gotten way stronger overall. And I set some replicas of one of my projects and I was able to do the crux of one of my dream boulders the very first day of the season, which I had never been able to do before. They thought a lot about the spectrum of difficulty as well. So the TB2 is great for beginners. It's also great for pro climbers. Climbers of all difficulties can make a lot of progress on this board. Head over to tensionboard.com slash nugget to learn more about the Tension Board 2 or use the Tension app to find a TB2 at a gym near you. Link in the description below and enjoy the rest of the video. And my next tip is to... Um... My next tip is don't be afraid to break the rules. I think there's there's two different aspects of this. So 
the first one is for newer board climbers. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about the Moonboard 2016. Like if you're a V4 or V5 climber, it's really hard to start doing problems on that thing. Like the easiest thing on there is like hard V4, I think. Yep. And uh, it doesn't have to be that way if you're willing to break the rules. You know, it's really hard to set climbs that use really juggy feet and actually make sense as climbs. But like another great example is like if you want to learn how to use the yellow holds on the moon board and they're just a little bit too difficult, you can make up climbs that use juggy feet. They won't make sense if you put lights on there because you could just break the beta, but it's still helpful. It's right. still helping you get used to these more intense holds and it's yeah more or less what you were talking about. But I think taking it to another level where forget the lights, forget setting problems that make you know sense in air quotes, break the rules, do your own thing. Um, that can be really helpful to kind of get unstuck or to make a breakthrough. And then the flip side of that is for more experienced climbers. I think people um, could benefit from breaking the rules when it comes to things like practicing heel hooks on the board. Like That's kind of taboo and like it's not allowed or whatever. People just want to use it as a strength only tool. Is that taboo? I don't know. Some, <laughs> for some people, it I'm is. just joking. You know? I, ha um, I have to. I've always heel hooked on a board, so <laughs> don't, don't at me. Yeah, I mean, Keen, I just did an episode with Keenan Takahashi, and he talked about this. Like, it kind of comes out in the wash. Like, if you are really good at, you know, heel hooks and toe hooks and all these things, then maybe it's good for you to climb straight on and avoid those things on the board to target your weaknesses. Right. But at the same time, like, if you get good at those things on the board and you're doing problems that are hard still, you're still doing something physically hard and you're building those skills to another level that you can apply outside. Right. So sure. yeah, just consider your goals and uh, let you, you know, give yourself permission to break the rules if it's gonna be, uh, if it's gonna create a better training situation for you. So my my next tip is, is kind of more of like a methodology that I've used with a bunch of people. So if you have never climbed on a board and you want to like learn how to climb on a board, this is kind of my strategy that I've used with people. So you probably wanna be consistently climbing like V four to six, depending on how hard your gym is and how steep it is before this would really make sense. Um, you know, I'm sure if you climb V3 consistently, like you can like get on the moon board and probably like feel the holds and stuff, but chances are good that like the actual moon board problems are gonna be, you know, too strenuous. And I think maybe the, the kilter board is a little bit more friendly to the lower grades. And definitely if your board is adjustable, so like a kilter board or a TB2 that's more adjustable, you wouldn't need a methodology like this. But if you wanna to jump to climbing on a 40 or you wanna start climbing on a 40 degree moon board, especially, this is a really good methodology. So the first like block, so that would be four to six weeks, you just try to stay on the board for 20 to 30 seconds, maybe 40 seconds, and you just traverse because it's a lot easier to hang onto the holds and go sideways than it is to like pull on the holds and go up. And that'll help you like develop the finger strength and the body tension that you need to stay on the wall, right? Second block, same thing, except for instead of traversing, you start going up, but you still try to stay on the board for 20, 30, 40 seconds using all the holds, basically just finding the easiest way up the board that you can, right? And just doing that once or twice a week, you know, for a few reps every time you go, um, every time you go to the board. And then the last block is you start climbing easier problems, but you use all feet on the easier problems. So you can like mm -hmm. add a lot of stability to the moves. You're not having to cut your feet on the small holds. You're kind of like becoming familiar with actual movement on the board, but you still can like do the moves in a very stable and like manageable controlled way. And then after that, you should be ready to like jump into climbing the easier problems. And I know like some people kind of balk because that those three blocks is going to be like three to four months, but if you kind of weigh that against going from consistently climbing V4 to six, where, wherever you're at, and then start climbing on a moon board and just jump straight into the problems and your foot pops on a greasy foothold and you pop a pulley, it's gonna be three or four months before you're climbing on the moon board anyway. So it's it really is like, it really does benefit from progressive overload and like starting with a, a manageable dose and then like increasing that dose in a controlled way. Hey friends, Steven here. The video you just watched is from Fundamentals Season 2. Our goal for this series is to provide helpful information about the fundamentals of improving at climbing. Each episode's about an hour long, so if you want more of our tips, you can listen to this full episode and all of the other Fundamentals episodes for free on the Nugget Climbing Podcast. 
podcast. It's available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube Music. Check it out. There's links right there in the description below. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you in the next video.